Hey, welcome to Lessons in Leadership. I'm Steve out of Ottawa with the uh, talented Mary Gamba. Uh, Mary, listen, I changed ties from the last show to this one. You seem to be wearing, you, are you hooked, like caught up in that dress? And I am not. It's actually a shirt, not a dress. And oh, I, I, I've timed it perfectly. I'll be changing for our next uh, couple of tapings that we're doing. Don't worry, I've got it going. And then I make sure to space out the program so I'm not wearing the same thing every Sunday when people watch us on News 12 Plus, followed by Think Tank at 10.30 a.m. Notice how I got that plug in there? Uh, I like your segues. They're getting smoother. Uh, real I'm, quick, I'm Mary, on let, by the way, Mary controls the entire broadcast schedule, so she makes herself look good and mixes things up. Mary, who are the sponsors of this great Lessons in Leadership show? Well, first and foremost, I would like to thank our newest sponsor, which is the NJ Sharing Network. And we're going to be joined in just a little bit by Joe Roth uh, from the New Jersey Sharing Network. And then we also have Seton Hall University and the Bucino Leadership Institute at Seton Hall University. We have Gibbons PC, Valley Bank, the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, and Praker Metis. So, by the way, I want to, again, thank all of our sponsors for making it happen. But right now, uh, we want to welcome uh, our great friend, Joe Roth, who's the president and CEO of New Jersey Sharing Network. Joe, great to have you with us, A. And B, thank you so much for believing in what Mary and I are doing with Lessons in Leadership, because you are a true student of leadership. Is that not correct? Absolutely. Thank you, Steve, too, and Mary, for having me. I'm, I'm really honored to be on the program. Hey, Joe, let everybody know, um, Joe's got his, I don't take mine off, um, sharing network. While the website goes up, tell folks what it is, Joe, and why it is so incredibly important to be aware of organ and tissue donation. Well, there are over 4,000 people in New Jersey and 108,000 people nationally who are waiting for the life-saving gift of life from, through an organ transplant. Uh, the New Jersey Sharing Network is responsible for uh, recovering and allocating organs in the state of New Jersey. And so we have this um, purpose, core purpose of saving and enhancing lives through organ donation. And it's really a, something that's not very hard to do. You can sign up on a registry. and uh, only one-tenth of one percent of the people who do register to be donors may actually become a donor, but it's good for your family and your friends to know that you've made that decision. So if something tragic does befall you, they know uh, what's going to happen next. Mm. By the way, we've been partners with the Sharing Network for years, promoting organ and tissue donation. Um, there's a 5K, there's a 10K, K, there's, a, there's the tramp, transplant games that are scheduled for 2021. We actually were in a, a, in a great Zoom meeting for about an hour yesterday with Joe and his colleague, Elise Glennon, who, who runs the foundation um, at the Sharing Network. And I asked you a ridiculous question, Joe. We're taping this on December 1st. I said, Joe, so listen, for 2021, what do we think is going to happen with the transplant gains, which we'll talk about, and also the 5K and the 10K, which are scheduled, I believe, for May and June? And Joe looked at me and he said, are you serious? I'm trying to figure out next week. So, <laughs> Joe, leadership in the age of uncertainty. Go. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's, you know, it's something you don't train for, really. Um, you have to, the, the favorite word these days, you have to learn how to pivot and pivot frequently at times. Um, uh, especially in our, our type of work where we have to be available 24-7, 365. We're not a, basically a stay-in-the-office organization. Uh, you know, the vast majority of our staff are out in the field working in hospitals trying to identify potential donors, recovering organs, coordinating uh, teams coming in, coordinating flights out. It's, it's a lot of moving parts. So when COVID hit, uh, it, we had to work very quickly to pivot, but also the other thing about this before Mary jumps in, um, because you're a student of leadership, because you've coached and mentored so many people in your previous life in the pharmaceutical world uh, as well, um, I gotta ask you this, leadership development, training your people to, be, to get to the next level, to be stronger leaders, while you're trying to simply survive financially and do the work you're doing every day, I've said this in many lessons in leadership programs. There are some of the folks that we deal with who say, listen, we don't have the luxury of coaching and training our people during, to become better leaders during this crisis. What do you say? I disagree with that. I think you have to make, make time for coaching and training. Um, the people's skills need to constantly be polished and, and, um, 
added to, and I think even in a, a there's uncertain times, you have to help develop your people for those eventualities. And I, I so I disagree with someone who says, uh, we don't have the time. You need to make the time uh, for that. Yeah, and by the way, I've, I've done some great leadership seminars uh, with the sharing network, with your volunteers, with others, and it's always so inspiring because uh, the one thing I often say it's hard to teach people is to care about others and have empathy and compassion. The folks at the Sharing Network have that in spades. Mary, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Steve. And thank you, Joe, again, for joining us and for the great work that you're doing. And as Steve said, we'll continue to put up the website and to get more information on organ and tissue donation. So uh, I would love to just hear a little bit more. What are the transplant games? I mean, God willing, uh, they're going to happen in New Jersey in some capacity. It may be different than what we all had originally hoped, having people come in from all over the country. But um, can you talk a little bit about the transplant games and why it is such an important event? What exactly is it? Sure, I'd, I'd be happy to, Mary. The Transplant Games are, are an uh, Olympic-style event uh, held every two years and, or around the country in different areas uh, to highlight the, the, um, the benefits of organ transplant, the fact that it returns people who are on death's doors to a productive life to show that they can live a normal life. Uh, we have various events that range anywhere from track and field to swimming to basketball, volleyball. There's even dart throwing. There's uh, all, all different kinds of event, events to highlight recipients and donor families from around the country. And so our hope was in 2020, obviously, to hold the largest games ever held in the United States. Uh, but we still think that in 2021, in July, when the games uh, again happen, we will probably have a, a good number of people. We thought we were gonna get 20,000. I think we'll get at least 10,000, maybe more for this. But there's a lot of uncertainty and you're dealing with the CDC and you're dealing with what people are, where we are with the vaccine. Again, we're taping this on December the 1st in 2020. It'll be seen after that. We all pray, cross our fingers that things move in the right direction. Joe, but one of the things I remember, this is one of the things we miss about face-to-face -face meetings. We go to meet Joe, Elise and their team, and we're brainstorming about how we can uh, do a better job in terms of public awareness around organ and tissue donation. And Joe takes us on a tour. Uh, you're in New Providence, right? Right. Right. So Joe take us on, takes us on in the corporate offices. Corporate offices, they're a nonprofit, corporate office. So he takes us on a tour and Joe goes, this is my office. Mary, we walk into Joe's office, talk about innovation, talk about pivoting, talking about mental and physical health. What does Joe have going on in that office? Well, at the time, and I'm sure it's probably even gotten more cool since then, uh, you had a treadmill desk <laughs> where, where literally you put your computer on this treadmill so you can walk and talk and uh, too many of us, myself included, just sit all day. So what is that connection between personal well-being, leadership, and just being able to um, approach your day-to-day? Oh, well, that's a great, great question. Uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the treadmill desk was a, uh, an add-on when we moved to New Providence. We had seen it at our uh, uh, office furniture supplier. There was something new they had developed uh, that it's, it's really a slow moving treadmill. They found that studies at Mayo Clinic and other places had seen, shown that if you can move for 15 minutes or so every few hours uh, when you're at work, you can actually be more productive. So uh, I talked my uh, office furniture supplier into uh, providing one for us, and it's very good. It, it only goes, uh, it goes less than uh, two miles an hour, uh, but you can talk and walk. You don't, you don't get breathless, and yet it gets your circulation going. Now, the other innovation in my office that uh, has taken hold around our organization is, is the standing desk. Uh, years and years ago, before I got to the Sharing Network, I used to stand up and pace in my office a lot when I was on conference calls or, or whatever. And I liked the, uh, you know, I felt better at it. So um, we bought and installed uh, standing desks or very desks at various different uh, offices and desks around the, around the office. And I, I find that a lot of people are taking advantage of it today. You can stand up for as long as you want or you can sit down, but it also helps you become more productive. So I'm a fan of those. Joe Roth never stops, stops innovating. Watch how many people get standing desks and try to get this treadmill desk. Hey, Joe, before I let you go, uh, two questions. 
They have nothing to do with each other. Number one, the greatest leadership lesson you've learned in the, it'll be almost nine months, almost to a year by the time this is seen since COVID really hit. The greatest leadership lesson you've learned to date has been? Trust your team. Trust them to, to you know, keep their, their uh, areas of responsibility going forward and, and pr productive. Uh, we had to, <clears throat> um, you know, make sure that our staff had, that our clinical staff had proper PPE for going into hospitals. And uh, our lab had to work 24 seven and they were able to rejigger re our, our schedules to make sure that there were enough staff on hand. So uh, trust your team. They, they can, they know their work, make sure they know their work and let them carry on forward. Well said. Hey, by the way, Mary, you have no idea where my last question is coming from. You ready? During a, in a million years, you couldn't figure it out. You well, ready? Funny. I always try to think I could fill in the blanks. I thought you were going to ask him what book he's reading. Nah, I, I, no okay. disrespect, Joe, because there's only one book. Jo Mary, what's the book he should be reading? Lesson in Leadership. Thank, Thank you, Joe Roth. But that's not the question. Listen, one of the other times we were with you that night or the night before, I can't remember how you looked when we were meeting, you had gone to, I believe, a Rolling Stones concert. Uh, yeah, that was August 5th of uh, 2019, I believe, right? Hey, Joe, what's the deal with you and your healthy obsession and love of rock and roll music? And is Mick Jagger a great leader? <laughs> well, I'll answer the second question. I, he <laughs> must be. He's kept the band together for, a long, for this long. <laughs> so. And he's in great shape. Yeah, I can believe it. 76 years old, just had a heart valve replacement, and he was running all over the stage for that concert. So, so he's, listen, leaders of all stripes, keeping that band together, keeping them successful, being out front. I mean, trust me, I'm impressed. But your love of rock and roll music, go ahead. You know, I grew up in the 60s when the Beatles started uh, and, and really got infatuated with all that music in the 70s when all the rock and roll bands started becoming famous. And the Stones have always been my most favorite band. Uh, I just love listening to them all the time. But uh, I've had, you know, I've just had this fondness for rock and roll ever since. And that's what I listen to. Before I let Joe go, are you ready? Joe's going to get this right. Hey, Joe, this morning, every morning when I get ready to tape or I get ready to do what I need to do, but especially broadcast after a workout. And again, I there's never give enough time. I come up like half sweating and whatever. But I'll say this. There's only one. Rolling Stone song that I blast to start me to get ready for the day. Joe Roth, tell everybody what it is. Oh, I, <laughs> I gave you the clue. I, I, can't, I got so many of them in there. My, my hey, Joe, favorite. if you listen to Start Me Up, oh, is that a song that gets you ready for the day? Start Me Up for sure, yeah. <laughs> Joe, sure. we will edit out the mistake you made and make you look good at the end. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, Joe, did I not tell you that this show was a lot looser than some of our other yeah, shows? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you. Hey, Joe, thank you and Elise um, and everyone at the Sharing Network, frankly, doing God's work every day, uh, the gift of life. And also, thank you for believing, and I said it before, I'll say it again, believing in Mary Gamba, believing in myself and our entire production team to help people become better leaders, because we would not be able to do that if it was not, we're not for the great sponsors like the Sharing Network. Thank you, Joe. All the best. Thanks. Thank you and Mary, and have a great holiday season. Take care. Go jump on your treadmill and take care of business. Uh, we'll be back after this. <laughs> Start it up. <laughs> this edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, and my colleague, Mary Gamba, is brought to you by Valley Bank, the Bucino Leadership Institute at Seton Hall University, New Jersey Sharing Network, Prager Metis, the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, and Seton Hall University, showing the world what great minds can do since 1856. This is Mary Gamba. If you want more leadership tips and tools, log on to stand-deliver.com. Promotional support for this edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, and my colleague, Mary Gamba, has been provided by NJ On Air, CIANJ, and Commerce Magazine.
Construction companies work at the heart of our communities. So do the operating engineers of Local 825, who build our roads and bridges and ensure the safe transmission of energy that keeps us on the move. Local 825 works with contractors as partners in quality, safety, and training. Our achievements stand as monuments to collaboration that will last for generations. This message has been brought to you by the members of Operating Engineers Local 825. Better building begins here. Welcome back to Lessons in Leadership. Steve Adubato, Mary Gamba. Mary, that was great with Joe Roth. Um, By the way, did you, did you know the Rolling Stone stuff? Um, oh, yeah, no, I did. It, it's funny. I wasn't sure exactly what song you were going to go with. I assume that would be the one, but I actually, too, am a Rolling Stones fan. So I do start me up in the morning really loud, right? And um, it just does remind me, like, get your stuff together. You got to go. I was telling Scarlett earlier, he was like, why did you work out today? I said that a migraine. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. I said, I had a migraine. He goes, why'd you work out? I said, well, if I don't work out, I don't feel like I'm... He said, yeah, but then you came up and we were taping today and I wasn't really ready. Um, how do you, dare I say, Mary, as a leader and as a person, a professional, quote unquote, start yourself up in the morning? Well, with me, I, it's so funny. Every time my alarm goes off and I just want to go back to sleep, I always start my day. <laughs> hey, Mary, <laughs> this is a, be, supposed to be a show that motivates people. I'm, go I'm going there. And then I, because, you know, every day it's like, oh, it's like Groundhog Day all over again, especially now with COVID. And, you know, every day you're home and doing the same thing. But I always Wait, say. By the way, talking about innovation. And no, let me just, finish. Go ahead. I always say to myself, be positive and be, and be productive because if you're positive and productive, but I do not start my day with working out. I start my day as long as I have one cup of coffee in the morning and I, uh, you know, just then get a good shower, a nice hot shower. Um, I have to shower. Even if I shower at night, I have to shower to start my day. But I, I, I'm, I'm like you, I work out um, after work because after work, I just feel my whole body's very tense and uh, I, I feel like my face, like I feel like it's all pressure and tight. So I work out at the end of the day. I got, I'm, by the way, I'm talking cold shower after a workout um, and the Rolling Stones start me up. And I don't, and if, with my wife, Jennifer, I want to say thank you. We're talking about gratitude in a lot of shows. I have great appreciation and gratitude for my wife, Jennifer. She's great because I don't want a simple cup of coffee, as you may see, you may pick up on uh, particularly high maintenance, as Mary knows. I like my skim cappuccino, very hot and a little bit dry. And we have a machine that she does. And there it is. The coffee's there. It starts me up. I'm just saying that. <laughs> now that Thank everyone knows how we start our day. <laughs> Not that anyone cares. Hey, Mary, uh, well, where can uh, Lessons in Leadership? We're about to go to John Casmatidis, chairman and CEO of Red Apple Group. They happen to own one of the best radio stations in the country, 77 WABC. Curtis Lee with Frank Morano, all of our friends are over there, great operation. I've also did some work back in the day for WABC. Uh, John Casmatidis owns this. Talk about an entrepreneur and a leader. Mary, real quick, tell everyone where we can be seen. Sure thing. So you can find us if you are into podcasts, which many of us are, on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, as well as on Spotify. You can find us right here on News 12 Plus. Make sure you stay tuned to 1030 for Think Tank, our sister program, uh, right after this, which is also worth watching. And, you could and by also the way, who is my co-host on uh, Think Tank? Oh, that would be Nicole, Nicole Swinnerton. She is a wonderful producer and co-host on Think Tank, which is super exciting. And it's great to watch the two of you together on that program as well. And yep. then you can also find us online in a variety of platforms, NJ On Air. You can find us on CIANJ, our promotional partner in Commerce Magazine, NJ.com, and the list goes on and on. And New Jersey Business and Industry Association, all good stuff. We'll thank our sponsors as well during the program. We'll put up the chirons. So listen, Mary and I are going to go to uh, John Casmatidis right now, and we'll come back, and we'll talk after. By the way, John, um, thinking of running for mayor in New York City, this is not a political discussion. It's a discussion about leadership. He's also built an incredibly su successful um, operation called Gristides. He'll tell you about it, but then he's into media as well. He's a true entrepreneur and leader. John Casmatidis. Steve Adubato, this is Lessons in Leadership. We talk about a leader in business and media and growing every day and what he's doing. He is John Casmatidis, chairman and CEO of the Red Apple Group. By the way, John, how would you describe the Red Apple Group growing every day? Well, we're, each department is growing. Uh, we're in the oil business. Uh, we're in the supermarket business. We're in the real estate business. Uh, we're in the investment business. Well, we, we have different sectors. And I'm training my son, John Jr., to replace me. And by the way, your daughter is the chairman of the Republican 
committee, uh, Democrat, Republican committee in Manhattan, if I'm not mistaken, right? She is chairman of Manhattan. She's vice chairman of New York City and New York State. And uh, uh, she's been in Iowa a lot, and she's not running for president. Okay. By the way, we're taping this on the 22nd. This is not about presidential politics. It's about leadership. If you watch Lessons in Leadership, if you see us on News 12, um, for years we were on AM 970 the, and a bunch of other platforms. The reason I want to talk to John is because he's a leader. Your family's from Greece, correct? Uh, my, my two grandfathers came to America in 1913. One of them died in the 1918 uh, pandemic. So put this in perspective for us. Christides a supermarket chain. How many stores, where are they? We had as many as 150 stores between Gristini's, Pantry Pride in Florida, the Grand Union in Florida and the Caribbean, uh, Sloan's in New York. Uh, and now we're down to 35 stores because the retail business, let's just say the real estate business exceeded the value of the retail business. So now John's moving on the media and WABC, 77 WABC, there's a Long Island affiliate, if I'm not mistaken as well, John, the call letters are? WLIR, okay. Long Island Radio. And by the way, check out John on, um, a whole, on WABC, on AM 970, on the Cats Roundtable, Sunday mornings, 8.30 to 10. Uh, so here's the thing I want to ask. I've been a student of leadership for years. I wrote this book called Lessons in Leadership. Um, our mutual friend Jerry Crowley and I talk about over at AM 97, talk about leadership all the time. Here's what I want to know from you. You've had to not just be tough and strong, but you've had to be innovative, adaptive. You were just talking about the real estate and the, uh, the retail side of things. Do you have to constantly be innovative, even as successful as you are? Or do you say, you know what? We're good the way we are. We're going to keep the status quo. How do you look at it? Uh, you have to be constantly innovative. The world is changing. I've been a CEO for 51 years. And if you don't change with the times, you die. Yeah, we can ask Blockbuster about that, right? <laughs> you know, so many organizations, they didn't change. But I got to ask you, you're actually thinking of running for mayor of New York um, in 20. I ran for mayor. What is that? I ran for mayor in 2013. Right. Uh, there was no incumbents in 2013. Uh, I lost to Joe Loda in the primary. But I don't look like, uh, look, I like Joe. I don't look like I lost to Joe. I lost to Rudy Giuliani because of the fact that Rudy was the, the, the voice and the force behind Joe. Right. Uh, and I also had the Liberal, Liberal Party nomination. Uh, if I would have stayed into the Liberal Party nomination on the ballot in November, and it was a three-way race with Joe Loda, John Katzmatidis, and Bill de Blasio, I think I would have had a shot and I think if I look back at mistakes in life, it was a mistake not to continue on to November. You know, you just mentioned something interesting, John. By the way, if you're listening to us on the audio and radio and uh, John Casamitidis, chairman and CEO, Red Apple Group, you know, you just said something fascinating. If I made a mistake, that was the mistake, and this is what I learned. One of the chapters in my book talks about the greatest leaders acknowledge their mistakes, don't hide from them, but they learn from them. Is that a big part of your philosophy? You have to be able to admit mistakes and learn every day. And I tell my son and I told my daughter, no matter, admit the mistakes and learn from them and go forward. And it's not weakness to acknowledge a mistake, John? Absolutely not. It's strength to acknowledge a mistake, to be strong enough not to look at the people that you're facing and that they're going to think less of you because you made a mistake. I think confidence. They, they think more of you when, when you, if you admit mistakes. You know, I, I'm, I've got another minute with John. He's talking about confidence. To me, real leadership is about having the confidence to say, you know what, my bad, I got it wrong. It's a great book called Extreme Ownership by Two Navy Seals that I love. They own it. They own the mistakes. But, John, before I let you go, you've been at this for 50-plus years. Here's the thing I want to understand. I've been at it for a few years less than that. But how the heck do you keep your energy level up your enthusiasm and your passion. That's the thing that I want to understand because it's important for leaders half your age, my age, who are like, nah, I'm kind of tired. You don't ever seem tired. I, I try to tell uh, everybody, uh, you got to get a good night's sleep. And you have to have your vitamin. You know what vitamin is dependent on sleep? If you're vitamin D3, if you don't get enough sunshine, you don't get enough vitamin D3, you won't sleep right, and then you won't be right. 
I eat my vegetables. I went off a of fried food. Remember SOS? Yes. No sugar, no oil, no salt. So you connect, by the way, I read that John not only lost weight, but is in better shape than ever before. You connect being physically fit and healthier with strong leadership. And mental health, yes. Hey, listen, John Casmatiz, we, by the way, we scheduled to do one interview for public broadcasting for John talking about uh, President Trump and a whole range of other things. And then I said, listen, could you sit there and do this leadership thing? He's probably got a million things to do with his business, but I cannot thank you enough. John Casmatidis, who's the chairman and CEO, Red Apple Group. Check out AM, uh, excuse me, check out 77 WABC, our good friends, Curtis Sliwa, Frank Morano, a great rundown there. And, um, and also the Cats Roundtable every Sunday morning, 8.30 to 10 on a whole range of stations. John, thank you so much. You honor us. Well, thank you for having me. Hey, that was John Castamatidis. By the way, check out WABC. And also they have a station out in Long Island as well, Mary. Do you know the call letters? I don't know them off the top of my head. Fr Frank Morano's on there. Um, make sure we get it after the fact. We'll put it up in- I, uh, I don't want to give the wrong post. information. Yeah. Um, and by the way, check out Curtis Sliwa and the morning show there as well. The other folks, it's a great uh, network. By the way, so here we go. In the time we have left, I want to talk about this. So say we're doing really well in these very difficult times. And you and I have had this discussion before. We actually had a great discussion with one of our colleagues recently about this. So John's a business leader. He's an entrepreneur. He's involved in business development, sales, if you will, in a very sophisticated way. So I argued recently because we had closed a couple of nice deals and there was some pushback that said, hey, listen, why don't we pull back and not, this is a leadership issue, trust me. Um, we don't have to be as aggressive in fundraising and pulling in sponsors and underwriters. And I said the opposite, meaning you have no idea who you're going to lose, when you're going to lose them. You could do all the right things. A college, we lost a college recently that we've had for years because enrollment's down. There are others who are cutting back. Yeah, we brought in some new folks. We picked up some others. Mary, I say pedal to the metal when it comes to business development and bringing on new sponsors. Because my leadership approach is you assume nothing other than something bad could happen and be ready for a very rainy and stormy day with some cash on hand. You say? I agree with you completely. I think that it definitely is something uh, for any organization, no matter what business you're in, you need to make sure that you're always looking for uh, ways to innovate, ways to bring in new clients, bring in new revenue, because you never know uh, what's going to happen down the road. So you want to make sure that you don't get complacent and you don't get comfortable. You never, ever, ever want to be comfortable. You always want to be challenging yourself and pushing yourself. And a perfect example, and this isn't about us, it's about all of you, particularly to the restaurant owners and others in the hotel industry and in the airline industry and so many others struggling to try to keep afloat. Mary and I were putting together our 2021. This will be seen in 2021. I know we have a minute left. And we were saying, listen, this is our business plan for Stand and Deliver, our parent company. You'll see our website right up right now. And we listed all this, the uh, clients we had, the training we were doing, the coaching we were doing. And the next email we got was that one of our major clients would call the timeout. Now's not a good time. Meaning we assumed they'd be back on board. We may get them back, we hope. But they were holding off because of their economic reality. Point being, Mary, assume nothing. Go ahead, 30 seconds. Assume nothing. And we always talk about that. The, uh, there's a theory of separate realities. You have your own reality. Uh, but somebody else, they may be facing something that may not be public, that may not be outward. So you need to always be prepared and always be thinking of new and creative ways to grow your business, grow your team, and most importantly, to continue to innovate and learn. And by the way, thanking our sponsors again, I'll do this, Mary. Uh, Gregor Metis, Valley Bank, the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, Seton Hall University and the Bucino Leadership Institute at Seton Hall University. And the uh, New Jersey Sharing Network. I want to thank all of you uh, very generous sponsors for believing in Mary and I and Lessons and Leadership and the team behind the scenes. We'll see you next week. This edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, and my colleague, Mary Gamba, is brought to you by Valley Bank, the Bucino Leadership Institute at Seton Hall University, New Jersey Sharing Network, Prager Metis, the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, and Seton Hall University, showing the world what great minds can do since 1856. This is Mary Gamba. If you want more leadership tips and tools, log on to stand-deliver.com. That's stand-deliver.com. 
Promotional support for this edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, and my colleague, Mary Gamba, has been provided by NJ On Air, CIANJ, and Commerce Magazine.